Using huge cliffs, steep slopes, rocks, volcanoes, nature created boundaries that were not meant to be crossed. But humans were so stubborn that they paved paths, built tunnels and highways. Many of them became integral arteries connecting remote places with civilization. Highways reward travelers with picturesque landscapes, but not all of them are safe. The North Yungas Road was built in the 1930s by Paraguayan prisoners of war. It was used to deliver humanitarian aid between the highlands and the lowlands. Traders often squeezed into trucks and buses to try to sell their timber and crops in the capital. The road connects the capital of Bolivia, La Paz, with the administrative center of the North Yungas, the city of Caroaco. The single-lane gravel road without fences runs in the eastern Cordilleras well above the clouds. In places, its width does not exceed 3.5 m. The narrow mountain section, bending, passes over a wide canyon through slopes densely overgrown with tropical forest. The route includes steep descents, ascents and more than 200 turns. The unlit road is often shrouded in rain, fog, snow, landslides, falling rocks. One wrong turn can be fatal. But instead of driving at a moderate speed, drivers try to overtake each other. In the 1990s, the Inter-American Development Bank declared this treacherous road the most dangerous in the world. Up until 1998, more than 300 travelers died on the highway every year. Numerous crosses, improvised memorials, can be seen in places where unfortunate people fell from the cliff into the ravines of the jungle. People have long nicknamed it the Road of Death. Ferry Meadows Road, Pakistan A steep and rough rocky road starts high in the Himalayas near the Indus River, in the Gilgit-Baltistan region, and climbs to an altitude of over 3 kilometers. It was built by locals hundreds of years ago and has not been repaired since. Driving on the gravel road is so dangerous that only locals are allowed to drive it. An extremely narrow and dangerous path carved into the mountains leads to Nanga Parbat, Killer Mountain, the ninth highest mountain in the world and the second highest in Pakistan after K2. The first part of the road with a gravel surface carved out of the bare hills can be driven by an SUV. The track is no wider than a standard Jeep Wrangler. There are no barriers to protect against falling off the cliff into the canyon and traffic jams are common. The final section of rough dirt road, 9.65 kilometers, all the way to Ferry Meadows, is the most dangerous. Due to the congested narrow lane, it must be covered on foot or by bike. In winter, the road is closed due to heavy snowfall, avalanche danger, and ice. Zoji Law was built in 1947 and was initially used for military purposes. The pass zigzags along the rocky peaks of the world's highest mountain range, the Western Himalayas. The road runs through the state of Jammu and Kashmir along the Dras, Suru and Indus valleys, connecting the summer capital of Srinagar with the city of Leh. The pass is called the gateway to majestic Ladakh, a historical region in northern India that became the last refuge of Buddhist followers after the Chinese invasion of Tibet. It is a lifeline that keeps the people of Ladakh in touch with the rest of the world. It crosses Baltal, a camp for pilgrims, Madayen, a village in the Kargil area, and the ancient capital of the region, Leh. In fact, Zoji La is a dusty, crumbling, one-lane dirt path with no guardrails or road signs over a dangerous steep cliff. It is barely wide enough for small cars, but this does not prevent huge buses and trucks from driving along it. Strong winds, 
avalanches, landslides and mudslides are a common occurrence on the road. In winter, the pass is covered with snowdrifts, 15 to 24 meters deep, like thick ice walls. Snow locks Zoji Law for a long six months. It takes the regional border service up to two months to clear the road. In summer and spring, the pass becomes passable only after the snow melts. But heavy rains turn it into sticky mud. There is no room for error on this road. Its location in the countryside means that if trouble happens, getting help will be problematic. Commonwealth Avenue, Philippines Many of the deadliest roads are located at high altitudes or in remote locations where a lack of government oversight leads to fatal accidents. Commonwealth Avenue, on the other hand, is not high in the mountains, has no bridges over water, and is not even cut by hairpin turns. It is essentially an ordinary urban highway. But to locals, Commonwealth Avenue is known as the killer highway. Commonwealth Avenue, formerly Don Mariano Marcos Avenue, named after Congressman Mariano Rubio Marcos, 1897-1945, father of the late dictator Ferdinand E. Marcos, 1917-1989, extends from the memorial circle of Quezon City, the former capital and today one of the cultural, commercial, and political centers of the country and Southeast Asia, in the south to the intersection with Press Street in the north. The road was built in the 1960s and is part of the 7R7 radial road. It is paved and spans from 6 to 18 lanes, making it the widest road in the Philippines. Over the years, the avenue has seen the deaths of many pedestrians, walkers, cyclists, and vehicles. According to recent studies, the avenue has between 3 and 5 accidents every day, resulting in the tragic deaths of nearly 7,000 people per year. Commonwealth Avenue has become one of the deadliest roads in the Philippines and the world. And this is an example of a road for survival becoming a tourist destination. The village of Guoliang in the Taihang Mountains, Hunan Province, was isolated from the rest of the world until 1972. The only access to civilization was a steep, narrow staircase cut into the mountainside and called Heavenly. The treacherous, slippery climb was unsafe even for the most agile and resilient villagers. The Chinese government did not consider it advisable to build a road to a settlement with a population of only 300 people. But the villagers did not agree with this, they wanted to have a connection with the neighboring cities of Huixian and Xinxiang. And then 13 volunteers, led by their leader Shen Mingxin, began to dig a tunnel right in the rock. Having no experience in road construction, some villagers died in accidents. But the rest continued their merciless fight with the stone. It took five years, 4,000 hammers, 12 tons of steel and quite a few chisels to build. They used explosives to break up the rock above the dizzying drop. The workers had no access to heavy machinery. Working by hand, they advanced one meter every three days. By May 1, 1977, the road was open to traffic. The tunnel road, 5 meters high and 4 meters wide, in which two cars can barely pass each other, was built without the help of engineers. There are no barriers or street lights, and drivers must drive at their own risk. During rain, the road becomes even more dangerous due to thick fog and a slippery surface. The name of the tunnel is translated from Chinese as, road that allows no mistakes.